everyone. It is Sunday morning, which is why I'm still in my pajamas. We love to have pancakes at least once a week just to switch it up because we usually have oatmeal most, most days. I love these pancakes because they're 100% whole wheat pancakes, so you're still getting a lot of fiber with these. They're oil-free, and I'll show you some tips and tricks on how to make these oil-free um, even when you're cooking them. And um, they're sweetened with maple syrup, which is awesome. So let's get started. So first off, we need about one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. You'll also need one and a half tablespoons of baking powder. Optionally, you can add a half a teaspoon of salt, but if you're watching your sodium levels, feel free to leave it out. Next up, we've got cinnamon for these pancakes, which will really help add some nice flavor. The cinnamon that we buy is much more mild, and so if you have some really spicy cinnamon, you might want to tamper down the amount in this recipe. And when I say a teaspoon, I, uh, I go a little generous on it too, because I love cinnamon, so. And the only other addition that I have added to this recipe is the addition of flax meal. Um, it doesn't really change the consistency too much of the pancakes and it just adds those healthy omega-3 fats. We always add flax meal and chia seeds to our breakfast in the morning. And then of course you can add um, walnuts to your pancakes when they're finished as well. So we'll just do a tablespoon and a half. And the reason that we have ground flax meal is that if you are just eating whole flax seeds, they actually go right through your system and you're not able to digest them. So you really need them ground in order to get the benefits of the flax meal. And what I do is I, I actually do get whole flax seeds and then I just blend them up in my Vitamix just for a second. It just really takes a second. It's much cheaper to buy them whole than it is pre-ground. So um, that's just a little tip. And then so we've got all of our dry ingredients here in our bowl. We're just going to whisk those together so they are mixed in. So now we're going to come in with our wet ingredients. So this is so simple. All you need is a plant milk. So I here have some homemade almond milk. So all I do is I just blend um, five cups of water to one cup of almonds, and then I just strain it with, with this into a bowl, and that's it. We're gonna add in one and a half cups of almond milk. add in four tablespoons of maple syrup. You can reduce this if you don't want to add quite as much sugar to your pancakes. And our final ingredient is just vanilla. So we're going to go in with two teaspoons. It adds a really, really nice flavor to this. So you're going to stir this until it's just combined. If you over stir it, you may lose some of the power from the baking powder that helps these pancakes be nice and fluffy. So you'll see this is already getting pretty fluffy from the baking powder. So we're going to leave that here while we get some other things ready. Now's a great time to start heating up your pan. So what you're going to need is a non-stick pan and we want to make sure it's really hot before we add the pancakes to prevent them from sticking without any oil or uh, vegan butter or anything. So let's go over to the stove. Oh, <laughs> he needs to ready to trip me. And I'm just going to turn this on um, medium here, this little pan, which works really well for pancakes. And so while that's heating up, let's talk toppings. So one of my favorite toppings is just berries. And what we do is we just heat some frozen berries in a pan on you know low heat just to thaw them out. And they start really congealing and make a really nice like berry sauce almost. So I'm just gonna turn this on low and I'm going to add some berries in here. bag open. Okay. We 
we've got blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. These will just start thawing out as I make my pancakes. I'm also gonna cut up some fresh nectarines to add to this mixture to put on our waffles, so. So you can cut open a nectarine similar to the way you would cut open an avocado. So you'll cut through the middle all the way around, and then you'll twist the two sides in the opposite direction and pull them apart. And then all you do is just cut the other side in half and pull one side off. And then you can just grab the seed and pull it right out and put it in your compost. So you can see, giving it a couple minutes will activate the baking powder even more. And this is very fluffy. Go away. Okay. So I'm pretty sure my pan is hot enough now. So I'm just gonna put some of this batter in here and get cooking. We'll see how the first pancake turns out. It's always a bit of a, you know, a gamble with this first one, so. And don't be freaked out if your batter seems really too, almost too fluffy. Um, it works out fine. They come out great. I'll usually flatten out these pancakes a little bit with a spoon to make sure they spread out. And then you'll know when to flip these when the edges start looking a little bit more solid and you see bubbles coming out through the top. All right, so uh, it feels like it's pretty solid on the bottom, so I'm gonna flip this over. Looks great. So this should be done when the middle of the pancake no longer looks runny inside. And as your pancakes are cooking, you can occasionally stir your berries as well while they thaw out. All right, this guy is almost done. It still looks a little wet here, so I'm gonna leave it on. Um, but the good thing about vegan pancakes is that even if they're not cooked fully, you don't have to worry because there's no eggs in this. I don't wanna overdo this one, so it's let's see. Done. Ooh, close. I almost overdid it. it. These do, in general, these are darker looking pancakes because of the whole wheat flour. Two pancakes. And you can see how thick these are. They are so awesome. I love these pancakes. All right, pancake number three. And you can see I haven't added any oil or anything to this pan. It's just nice and hot, and I didn't add any pancakes until I knew it was very hot. So these berries look pretty done. I'm gonna turn off the stove here. Once your berries are fully thawed and just about simmering, you can put those in a bowl and off to the side for your pancakes to top them later. Another tip while cooking these pancakes is to turn down your stove top once it's really hot. Um, these pancakes do have a tendency to burn on the outside because they cook really quickly um, and the middle might still not be done. So turning it down to a lower heat will allow the middle to cook through and not scorch the outsides. These pancakes are definitely a treat, but they also have lots of nutrition. If you eat just two of these pancakes, which are a pretty good size, you're getting just under a third of your daily value of fiber for the day. Uh, there's no cholesterol in these pancakes. You're getting about 20% of your protein for the day. There's lots of vitamins and minerals in these, and that's not even accounting for the healthy toppings you might put on this. So the berries you might add to this will add lots of antioxidants for you, and the walnuts will also add additional omega-3s, which are really important healthy fats. So I think the first thing we need to talk about is how to, how to top these things. You have your way, and I have my way. Yeah, it's all the same. It's all the same ingredients. Oh, this looks good. This is a good way to start the morning. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna grab some chia seeds actually. Chia, chia. That's a good way to start the morning. Oh, that's so good. What do you like about these pancakes? I love how fluffy they are. And they're like so light. I don't really like the density of a lot of pancakes, whereas these ones are like nice and fluffy. They're so yeah. easy to eat. Yeah. Um, so what, about I, you? what do you like about it? Yeah, I like that they're like super filling and that they have like a lot of flavor on their own. So like the way I like to eat these is without maple syrup because there's maple syrup in it and I find it sweet enough with just the berries. But I love um, maple syrup. Cormac likes maple syrup. Really? Not that you really. Everybody loves maple syrup. Yeah, I think that these are definitely sweet enough to have without it if you're not a big sweets person. Yeah, I could I could easily have it without it. But I think it's all these are like all about the top. Like you can put a lot on these and they like can handle it kind of thing. Like 
Um, the walnuts are such a nice crunch and add like a great flavor. I also like putting banana on this as well, but I'm going to add some more chia to get some more omega. Well, some chia to get some mm. omega threes. Oh God. Okay. You got no chia? <laughs> no chia. <laughs> um, <coughs> I'm going to put some banana on my Hey, just put your chia on the thing. Do you usually do that? No, but I was too lazy to get the flax. This is in the fridge. Mm. The pancake is like sweet a little bit too. Yeah, it's maple syrup nice. in there. Yeah. I like to put banana on mine too. Put that banana. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm excited for this. Gonna get that banana. How's it with the chia seeds? They're a little crunchy. You're gonna have those all stuck in your teeth. Right. So I grow. I wouldn't recommend the chia, honestly. <laughs> They're not as good on it. Right. You experiment, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I have to say, the flavor of these pancakes is... Those are good. Like, they have so much flavor on their own. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah, it's nice how thick they are. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to sit down and talk a little bit about the trailer and what's going on with that. I would say we've been really busy with other stuff lately. So getting the trailer build stuff in has been pretty difficult. <laughs> What have you been up to? Exciting things. Yeah. 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 I've been working on <clears throat> lobster lift. It's a lobster trap that doesn't cause entanglement to North Atlantic right whales, which are an endangered species. And so um, myself and Ted that you guys have seen in the trailer build video we're working on that together. Yeah, we just shipped down our first <clears throat> uh, prototype to be tested down in Georgia by Kim Sawicki. She's testing all the other ropeless devices and she's including ours in the mix. And so we've been really pushing for that and other house stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe a couple of weeks till our next trailer build just because stuff has just come up. Um, and we just have a lot less time to work on it lately, but... We do want to work on it. Mm-hmm. It's just, you, it, it makes sense to, <clears throat> it makes sense to, like, put aside, like, a good chunk of time so you can get a lot done so you're not setting up and tearing down every yeah. time. So I think we're going to try to get, try to get as much of the outside of it done, you know, the rest of the structural stuff that we need to, like, take it in and out of the garage for, um, before the winter this this year and then we can um, try and do the rest of the inside over the winter um, as well as, as it's starting to get a little chillier out but um, have it ready for April 1st next year is our goal. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things that, that need to happen before then but <clears throat> hopefully we can get over a lot of these hurdles of um, you know, just kind of reinforcing the trailer and getting the lights in and um, so once we kind of have the shell done, doing the inside should be, should hopefully move a bit quicker and also be a bit more fun because um, you can kind of like see like, you know, nice clean stuff done. Mm -hmm. Like when we're putting the floor in, we shouldn't be like, oh, we need to do these other five steps before we do it. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> Time Seems will tell. To be the trend. You guys will find out. Um, so yeah, like Cormac said, once we once we get this like yeah, just like the trailer ready to be transformed, it should be a little easier, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. But uh there's other things to figure out too though, like the we so we want to make this trailer all electric. Um, and so you've been doing a lot of research on different batteries and how we're going to make that happen because we need to make sure that we can run all the appliances in there and still have enough power to like last us for the whole time right mm -hmm. and be able to pull enough power at once if I want to run multiple appliances um, correct yeah and so we'll go in depth into yeah. like how we're doing that um, as as we are actually doing it but um, generally we're going to be using a battery module that came out of a crash Tesla and that's like a five kilowatt hour 
um, battery that then we would be um, hooking up an inverter to that then would go to sort of a, a circuit breaker panel that we would have inside the trailer that would then feed all of the outlets and we'll still have to, to figure out how much power we actually use um, on a typical day uh, but we think that five kilowatts should be um, pretty sufficient uh, for our use case but only time will tell and we're going to be using Mo's car to <clears throat> somewhat charge the battery a little bit as well and the battery will also be charged by the solar panels on the house here. Mm -hmm. So that's the mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. Looks good. And then like over the winter too is a good opportunity to get all the permitting stuff done like yeah. there's like certain like um, health safety like food safety classes you have to take um, there's permits you have to get filled out and approved. Um, we'll have to have the trailer inspected, so we need to make sure that everything that we're doing on the trailer is to code um, so that we get approved and don't get denied after building the whole thing. Um, well, I've, I've already talked to the, I have talked to the health inspector and the fire safety people, and it doesn't seem like it's uh, um, going to be that big of a deal because we are going to make things like pretty nice and clean on the inside, generally speaking, so um, we're not really going to have much wood that is going to uh, cause any potential mold issues, but the big benefit to the way that Mo cooks is that she doesn't use any oil, <clears throat> and so it doesn't create any vapors inside the camper that um, sort of require us to have this big industrial um, hood vent that costs, you know, a few thousand dollars. Um, because the typical food trailers, you know, cooking like burgers or, or other things that, that use a lot of grease and has these fats that are breaking down and creating all this, all this vapor that would cause a problem generally in a small confined space like that. Um, and then the other side is we different, we're going to be using just electricity for powering all the things. So, um, it's not gonna, we wouldn't be having like a propane tank that would also be creating some gases that um, would create a problem in a confined space like that. So mm -hmm. it seems like it's the the first of its kind in Lowell. The um, health inspector and fire safety people were really helpful, but they're like, oh, okay, let's see how it goes. You know, they're <laughs> like, I've never seen, I've never heard of anything like that before, mm -hmm. but. I think this whole experience is gonna be a lot of trial and error because a lot of learning how many meals can we make in a short amount of time so people aren't waiting um and then how much food can we like how much what, food can what, we store in there what, how type, much... what type of menu can we like justify um because we want to we want to make sure that there's enough options for people but we also don't want to make it so that um it's too stressful <laughs> like we can't handle it you know Right, it's just a, it's yeah. just a lot of like figuring out how much of each ingredient do we need to bring with us um, each time and well, and then food well, like meal prepping like how many veggie burgers do I need to prep in advance? Like we don't know how many customers we're gonna have, so a lot of this stuff is gonna be yeah, kind of like flying by the seat of our pants a little bit until we get a better idea. Um, but yeah, as far as like appliances, I'm kind of foreseeing we'll need a toaster oven or two, probably um, crock pots induction stove top so that's, that's what we're going to use right mm -hmm. so everything just run on electricity um you may yeah i, we'll I have don't a fridge and a freezer right fridge and freezer code requires that we have like a three base sink and then a hand washing sink too so we have to fit that in there yep and we also need to have a means for uh, providing hot water so we have to have a standalone hot water tank and cold water tank that will be able to heat the water up to a certain temperature so that when we are cleaning dishes that they um, are disinfected to a sort of satisfactory degree. Yeah, I wonder how they, if they're actually going to believe that we don't use oil. You know what I mean? Because like that's like unheard of in <laughs> a food trailer. Right. Like, are you, you're just saying that so you don't have to do this thing. I'm afraid that they're going to be like, we don't believe, we don't believe you. Yeah. Um, so maybe having the menu set with all the ingredients listed would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and maybe you could even make them something. That's true. Yeah. Cause like when I'm, so when I saute things, 
I, I make sure the pan is hot and usually I can get away with not using oil for a while and if, I, if it does start sticking I just add a little water or veggie broth um, for like baking or like for, for making burgers and stuff I bake them on parchment paper and so and with falafels too like I don't cook them in a pan that need, you know requires it to be greased so I bake them with parchment paper um, and then I just don't use it as an ingredient in food as well. Mm -hmm. well we will we will have a, just sort of a general um, air vent to just keep the air circulating in there. Life is a balancing act and um, yeah we're trying to do our best and even if we don't have tri too many trailer build videos coming up soon um, in the next couple of weeks we've got a few things we have to do. Um, I'm going to try and keep going with the recipe videos as well so if there are any recipes that you guys are interested in seeing being done or any questions that you have please comment below um, and let me know I'd love to to answer some questions I know that this like lifestyle this way of cooking is very different from you know tip what's typically done and it's taken me many years to kind of like refine it and find the best ways of doing things it just didn't happen overnight so um, this is kind of things I've just learned through yeah trial and error just like the trailer thing that keeps me going is you know the issues that are the big issues of our generation's time like climate change and knowing that there's a way that like I could potentially contribute by creating more awareness around our food and like letting people still enjoy food because I think it's such an important thing to like enjoy food and feel good about what you're eating in like so many ways I'm stuffed that was good that was really good I'm ready for the day so please like and subscribe and we will eat more plants. We need more energy. <laughs> Alright, well thank you everybody for watching and please like and subscribe. Let's stay together. Please. Eat. Oh. <laughs> please. Eat more. <laughs> come here, come here. Alright, ready? One, two, three. Eat, eat more, more plants. plants.